The adult male, this is your stud on your farm. 3 to 3.4 before the breeding season. Anybody can tell me why? After work. After work. And when he's working? Him not eat. One thing, <laughs> there's one thing on his mind. And then him, and then him pop down. But there is one thing on your mind, so we have to make sure that before the breeding season, <laughs> fat him up, put on some energy, give him energy, give him protein, make him ready for the breeding season. We feed concentrate, energy and protein, four to six weeks before the breeding season. So a month or so before the breeding season, you prime him. One to two pounds of concentrate daily is reasonable. Outside of the breeding season, normal maintenance feed. Right? So... A month before the breeding season, we do what? We prime him. During maintenance, average. During outside the breeding season, average feed. Remember that. That's how you see the money with your feed costs. You can't be feeding the same high energy feed during this time. You lose your money. We we'll talk about the cost of energy and protein. At this stage, what we, we recognize last feeding lambing season right here at home floor. Um, previously, we average um, conception rate, um, um, prolific acid rate was about 1.5. Last season, we induced vitamin E and selenium about 4 to 6 weeks before, and the prolific acid rate went up to 1.8. Yeah, I was just about to ask, because I don't see the same The adult female. The lovely lady, she can us be maintained on pastures. That's the greatest thing about her. Doing that maintenance, doing normal outside the breeding season, it's a lower to graze. She'll survive. But before the breeding, we have to flush her. Who knows what flushing is? Yeah. Who knows what flushing is? Come on, agri students. We have agri students in here. Flushing? Same thing like the priming. But for the female, we call it flushing. No, no, that's my term. That's my term. That's my term. But flushing, we increase the nutrition, more energy. Them said that this boosts ovulation to improve conception rate. So we want to do this to the animal. We do that over condition. We provide lush pastures and supplements. Two weeks before the male is introduced and continue for two weeks after the male. Optimal body con composition, body condition score, 2.5, 3. Early mid gestation, not too much to worry about. Allow the animal to graze. Let's make sure the body condition still remains between that 2.5 and that 3. But what is important now is the last gestation. The last six weeks, we have 70% of fetal growth. Fe fetal growth, yes. So we increase the amount of energy needed. We start adding more grain. And we promote, see some stats where you guys at the presentation, you guys can look. 2.2 2, 2 pounds or 2 pounds for your goats. Adult female, lactation. Peak milk production 2 to 3 weeks after birth. I have a rapid decline 8 to 10 weeks. Sorry, professor. You said grain. What kind of grain? Concentrate. Commercial, Commercial concentrate. concentrate. Mix up with your corn and sorghum. Add that more to them diet. Increase it. That's where you get most of your energy and your protein from in that concentrated supplement. Better for them to utilize. So you add that one. And the reason for that too is when you have, when the animal is pregnant now, so it's less space inside there, so the movement happens. Mm -hmm. It's far less. Far less. less. So that's why you, should... you add more grain. It's compact. Um, adult female. We we'll talk about rapid milk production, two to three weeks. Rapid decline. 10 to 8 weeks. So you tell me after the 10, after the 10 weeks, what you start doing to your animal? On a nutrition basis, what would you start doing? How would that affect the feed? Would you still uh, try to give them a high plane of nutrition or you kind of take down that plane of nutrition now? Why? Production cost, right? So remember that. So from 1 week to 10 week, you try to give them, after that, you can reduce down that plane of nutrition now. That's so how you save your money.
Um, it requires adequate levels of protein prior to lactation. And we know why. Milk is protein based. Addition to fat, you can add fat. So you can get some fats from your concentrate or from your oils. So you might get like, some of us might be, have moringa, palm cake, or the palm oil cake. We can add this to the diet to provide some amount of fat, but not too much fat, 4-5% of them diet. Nutritional recommendations. We make sure we provide them with good quality water, especially in this drought period. They need to have the water troughs out there. Energy, bulk of the diet, structural carbohydrate. Fat, 4-5% minimum. Protein, a minimum of 7%, but if you guys can achieve 15% crude protein, naturally, throughout your life cycle, you guys should be good. Sometimes you want to increase it to probably 18, but 15, I can say, should maintain your animals. Your minerals, your calcium, your phosphorus at a ratio 1 to 1 or 2 to 1. Sodium chloride, 0.5% of the diet, which is your salt. And make feed changes slowly. We have had issues here on the farm. Drought conditions come, they were feeding a particular grass, and we can't find that grass anymore, so we just get some sugar cane and we throw it on them. Worst thing you could ever do. Because the rumen is used to a particular diet. If you're going to change it, you're going to change the amount of carbohydrates, the soluble carbohydrates or the amount of protein it, it can cause what you call bloat. Which is that issue. So try gradually change your feed if that's the case. Or if you have to change your feed drastically, you might have to get some baking soda or some mineral oil as a backup. So you feed the animal that to reduce what you call like bloat. It helps offset that. And you ensure appropriate stocking density for your forages. Important. You can't have an acre and, and put 30 animals on one acre. Make no sense. Who knows what's the stocking density for a sheep and goat per acre? Anybody? What's the average? Anybody? Seven. You say seven. You say fifteen. But it depends still, you know. You have the forage that you provide, but we're talking just theoretical. Yeah, but that's supposed to be the, the, what we see in the, in the books. You're saying it's eight. Average. Yeah, one cow per acre. <laughs> so what the books will say is eight. But we will know depending on what type of pasture you have. What kind of forage you have.